You know, I've been repping the Supermoto Life for over three and a half years since I owned this custom 2019 YZ450 FX Supermoto, which, by the way, I did a full build series on. But, you know, that begs the question, uh, what is the perfect Supermoto? Because this high-maintenance Supermoto, which is basically a race dirt bike, is not the perfect motorcycle for everybody, okay? But they have a lot of different Supermotos. And which supermoto should you pick? What is the perfect supermoto for you? I'm gonna tell you in this video. Stay tuned. Let's go for a ride. Subscribe today. Now, whatever motorcycle you decide to get, you gotta make sure you wear the gear to stay safe out there on the streets. And I have some really awesome gear if you wanna get it like this super lightweight carbon fiber helmet that comes with an automatic tent shield my moto vlog camera airbag vest to help keep you safe shorty gloves links to all my gear is in the description and comment section of this video one thing that's not great about a super moto is that these bikes are you know with the regular tire street tires or adv tires that you put on a bike they're not good off-road so but most of us spin most of our time out here on the street so riding off-road is, is that should be the least of your focus that's why I got these ADV tires they can get me off-road but I can't have too much fun off-road with them but that's why I got the Suron that's why it's good to have different bikes for what you want to do out here I'm telling you man, I don't, dude, I've had, you know, a lot of different street bikes. I've had the dual sport, everything, but it's something about the Supermoto and busting a wheelie out here and it, it's so lightweight and the power that you get, especially on this 450 here, man, it's just, it's indescribable. I mean, you have to witness it yourself. It's worth the extra maintenance for me, man, honestly. But with this bike, the reason why I chose the Yamaha, the YZ450 FX uh, 2019, is because Yamahas are known for their valves not moving. And I can attest to that, guys. I have not done one valve check on this bike since I bought it, none. All I've done is oil changes, change the coolant out, um, and, and clean and lube the chain and, and do oil changes about every I probably have done about every 8 to 12 hours I like to keep fresh oil in it it only holds 0 0.60 quart of an oil I mean it holds very little oil so you don't want to go too long you know riding on the streets you know with, without doing an oil change the reason why I didn't want to mess with like a, a DR a Suzuki DRZ 400 is because it had a carburetor um, you had to mod it to get the power out of it. Um, it's a bit outdated. Uh, it's heavier at 320 pounds. Yeah, you could take some things off, do this and that, make it a little bit lighter, but it's still heavy. Um, it's still old bike, but it's a cool bike. Don't get me wrong, man. And it's low maintenance, though, you know? Um, as where this bike, it's got like, what, 55 horsepower stock. I don't have to do nothing to it. But uh, just make it street legal. Throw some supermoto wheels on it, and uh, and make a, and call and put a plate on it and call it a day. And I got me a, a a crazy powerful bike with tons of torque and everything, man. Also, you have the KTM 690 uh, SMCR supermoto right out of the gate. It's street legal. Tons of power at 75 horsepower and 53 pounds feet of torque. Um, the Husky 701 is pretty much the same bike with a, a few different components on it. Um, the bikes weigh in at like 350 pounds though, uh, compared to this bike weighing 260 pounds. So you're, you're packing an extra 90 pounds of weight uh, with the, the KTM or the Husky Supermoto. On the street, you know, weight really doesn't matter that much. Uh, the weight really matters off-road when you're wrangling the bike around you know and because it takes so much energy out of you you know when the bike is heavy off-road the supermoto is great because you could do a little bit of everything off-road but man it's 
it, uh, it's not that great off-road and on sketchy roads like this <laughs> but you can still feel that extra weight on the road I personally like a lightweight bike on the street too man it's just something about wrangling around a super lightweight bike you can throw it around and um, I just personally I like that but it may not matter to you on what you know whether the weight matters or not to you it does but I got a lot of sketchy roads out here <laughs> back out here on the streets but from what I hear I've never ridden the KTM or Husky so I really can't comment on them I've just heard you know uh, what people say um, they say that it's not maybe the easiest to wheelie on that you know you do have the fuel tank on the back um, like this bike is gonna be super easy to wheelie man but I don't recommend this for noobs <laughs> yeah baby we out here <laughs> um, see man I tell you the bike just makes you do that <laughs> and then you got other supermotos you got the Kawasaki KLX 300 they just recently came out with not too long ago uh, that bike is cool too but you know it's it's 300 pounds but it's pretty slow uh, it's not gonna have the torque and the power like this bike is gonna have uh, it's gonna be a little slower than the DRZ 400 um, but it's a good starter supermoto for those of you guys who want to get into supermotos but you're fairly new you know <laughs> oh boy, I love that torque. <laughs> You're not going to get that torque, you know, on the KLX 300. Another great option for pretty much everybody because you don't have to learn how to shift gears is the electric Zero FXS Supermoto that has 46 horsepower, 78 foot pounds of torque, but only at 251 pounds and has a top speed of 85 miles per hour, but only a 50 mile range. So you're going to get range anxiety like I do on my Suron. To be honest with you, it really just comes down to where you're at skill level wise, what you're looking for in a bike. Um, if you care about maintenance or anything, I, yo, if you don't care about doing an oil change, which oil changes are very easy on this bike because it holds, like I said, only holds just a little over a half quart of oil. So the oil changes are pretty quick, man, and easy. And it does, it's not a lot of oil, so you're not spending a ton of money on oil. And, um, and you, you could get by probably every 15 hours. So I, I just wouldn't make this your main bike if you're gonna do what I did and get like a 450 converted. Now you can get, the uh, a Honda CRF 450L or the, or the new RL and convert it to a supermoto. Now they do get, I think, 600 miles between oil changes and I think valve clearance check is at uh, 1,800 miles. So you get more leeway with that bike. Um, but like I said, with this bike, I haven't done any valve checks at all, man. I've had it for three and a half years and it rides better now than it did brand new. <laughs> really, it comes down to this. There is no such thing as a perfect supermoto for everybody okay it just the matters like i said what you're looking for where you're at skill level wise um and just you know what you want to do with it if you want to commute to work daily then obviously this is not the answer this 450 here um if you want to just use it as a hooligan bike every now and then as a second or third bike in your garage this is the bike that you probably want to get if you're looking for a bike that can do a little bit of everything and that's got the power you want you can commute on it um, but it's a little bit heavier then of course you got the KTM 690 SMCR and the Husky 701 uh, Supermotos um, which are great options so honestly what I would say if you're looking for a main bike you want the power um, and you don't mind the extra weight then really the KTM 690 SMCR or the Husky 701 Supermoto is really the way to go to be honest with you just keeping it real but like I said <laughs> oh, it's just something about this bike though man I'm telling you it's just something about the 450 the 450 lightweight powerful 
<laughs> this thing is sick, man. It's worth the extra oil changes, but uh, I don't know, man. It's up to you. Make sure to hit thumbs up, but leave a comment. Let me know, guys. What 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 type of supermoto are you looking at now? And maybe if you have any other questions you want to ask me, uh, let's talk about it. Let's let's talk about any other motorcycles or what other type of motorcycles you'd like to see me get. Um, let's talk about it. I appreciate you guys. Make sure to subscribe to my All in One Motorcycle channel. Make sure to check out my other channel, Bug Out Moto. I uh, appreciate all you guys. So until next time, catch you guys later. Thumbs up. Check out my playlist for new riders and popular videos. Don't forget to comment and subscribe and check out my other channel, Bug Out Moto, where I customize a van for my motorcycle so I can live in my van with my motorcycle and travel across the country anywhere. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Bug Out Moto. Yeah.